we're going to be talking about uh, VFR um, and uh, controlled airspaces, right? So if you look at this, if you look at your map, you see where I'm pointing at right here? Yeah. So this outer circle, right? This is the controlled airspace. But the outer circle doesn't go all the way down to the ground. Only this one goes all the way down to the ground, okay? So this one right here from the uh, from sea level, it starts at 200. I'm sorry. I think on this one it starts at uh, at 100, 100. So if you were out here flying around under 100, right, you're, you are not in controlled airspace. If you're up higher, above 100 and you're out here, that is controlled airspace. That controlled, the whole controlled airspace stops at 500 meters off the deck. Okay? So if you fly across this, the only way that you'll ever fly across this is being above 500 meters off of sea level. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Think of it like an upside-down wedding cake. That's right. All right. So we have... Uh, we're only going to talk about, um, well, we're going to talk about all the airspaces, but let's let's talk about um, D, E, and G, right? These are Class D, Class E, Class G airspaces. Class D airspace dimensions are generally from the surface to 2,500 feet. So this right here is a Class D airspace, all right? That's all Class D. Um because it really doesn't always have air controlled uh, person talking on it, right? Um, so if you look at the other one, if you go up north, right, there's like Molas Airfield, also, same thing. That's how we deal with those. All the airfields are that way. So um, E and G, um, I'm not really gonna get into those too much. Um, G airspace is, uh, is anything in between that is above 400 meters off the, or actually 400 feet off the deck. Um, so anyway, it's yeah, whatever. Um, it's essentially uncontrolled airspace. Right. So all right. So what we have now is uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, two-way radio communication um, in uh, in a Class D airspace. So you you must have two-way radio communication must be established with ATC prior to entering and while operating in Class D airspace. So if there's an ATC on board, on duty, when you're in this airspace, you always make sure that that ATC knows what you're doing. When you leave the airspace, it doesn't really matter. If there's no ATC, we're always telling what we're doing. Are we uh, entering downwind? Um, are we going to uh, base and then into final? those type of things that we need to be communicating to everybody in the airspace anyway. Um, when, we're, when we actually are fully training in advanced uh, um, flight, advanced rotary, we will be talking about how we're communicating and everything we're doing across the board. So you might as well just go ahead and start doing it now. Because when we play for other units, they need to know exactly where we are, where our choppers are, where our aircraft are. Plus, we need to know between us so we don't run any run into each other as well um so fly in the um, so all right so let's let's do this um hold on i'm not breaking up i'm just kind of reading ahead real quick um all right let's uh okay so if i'm if i'm sitting right here right and I'm going to go ahead, and I know that I'm going to head out that direction, right? Where the direction I'm looking, southwest. And I'm sitting right here. And I'm sitting there, and pretty soon, whoever's leading my group, they say post, post up, whatever degree that is, that would be at, uh, let's say it's uh, 2.30, right? And without leaving the ground... All I do is throttle up just a little bit, give me a little bit of lift, but don't leave the ground. And all I do is just hit my right rudder pedal. And I don't know how you guys, how you're set, you're set up, but I hit my rudder pedal and it turns me around. 
turns right there. That's called posting up. Okay. Do that as much as possible because getting up, flying off the deck, turning, and then moving there, it's, you don't really have to do that. If I have to come from that landing pad out here to the taxiway, okay, fine. But if I can post up and then take off, do that. If I can fly and be safe at 500 meters off the deck versus 15 meters off the deck, fly at 500 meters off the deck. Don't do anything that's going to endanger you, the aircraft, your crew, or the people that you're hauling, right? Because it just becomes a bad day for everybody if you crash. Don't take any um, unnecessary um, risk. Um, so let's uh, talk a little bit about... A, uh, another name for what he just mentioned where you add power to, but don't come off the ground. It's called getting light on the skids. Um, another term you might hear. So let's talk about um, what are our intentions, right? So when we spin up, our intentions are taxing the staging area, runway, refuel or rearm, picking up ground troops, replies uh, for transport, um, or we're going to go out and we're going to actually uh, do some ISR work or whatever, right? So the, the moral of the story here is what are my intentions, right? I'm about ready to take off. I need to get out of here some way, right? I need to get there quick or I need to go slow. I'm waiting for people. Um, and I'm up to speed. Um, I can taxi whatever I'm doing. The chopper's running and I'm kind of going through that, right? So... We have a couple different egresses opportunities here. You can take off right from the from the uh, the landing pad. It's great. Don't ever fly towards your troops and land closer. Make them come to you. Don't you know? Like it's so easy to fly over that wall and land right in the middle of everybody. It looks cool. It's stupid. Don't do it. Don't don't take any unnecessary risk with your aircraft. All right. Be cool about it. Make people come to you, and that's okay. Make them come to you. Um, then you, you know, the other thing too is that just like a plane, we taxi out to the runway, and we take off on a runway, right? We use the runways just like an airplane would run, would uh, use it. Um, also, you can uh, um, egress um, from like right here. This is an uh, an egress route right here, so we can take off right here and go out at 040 so if you look at your uh, compass directly out is 040 and we can just take off um we've had people take off directly northwest out of here between those two poles right down this little taxiway line and take mm -hmm. off the biggest thing you never ever do ever ever and if i see it i'll throw you out if you fly other uh, fly over other aircraft don't do it don't take the unnecessary risk don't blow you up, everything around you, and what everybody's worked for. Because people get pissed, and they don't want you to fly anymore, right? So be cool. Um, and I can't stress that enough. It, it gets so frustrating when we get pilots that just are dicks, are, are jerks. They don't, they don't follow any type of rule. They have no discipline. And they, they look stupid. How about that? Um, so the biggest thing that, that we've got to make sure that we're doing all right, um, is when we take off, when we come in for landing, we're always communicating, okay? And I'm going to start knocking people out because you're not communicating. Always communicate, all right, so we know where it's going, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and jump in some choppers. You can find them out there on, uh, on the tarmac if you want to. There's two choppers sitting right here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and taxi over to staging area two. And we're going to go through the advanced course. Everybody knows what the advanced course is, right? Yep, yes, sir. Oh. All right. So what we're doing with the advanced course is that's what we call agility training. We want it very s slow, methodical, full control. Don't go through it fast. Don't try any of the extra turns or anything unless you absolutely know you get, it's going to be flawless. And it's going to work. The thing that we don't do here is we do not fly out of our means. We always fly within our means. And what that means, 
if you can't do it and you've never tried it and you haven't practiced your ass off on it, don't do it. Fly controlled, steady, and be the rock. And that's what everybody wants, okay? That's what pilots want. Um, I've flown for lots of units, and that's what they respect more. They don't care about the cool guy that can crash. They want people to be responsible. They want to have discipline, and they want to have fun. Okay? Um, all right. So um, Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So, have, um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to cruise through that um, once, and then we're going to land uh, on staging area two. And uh, then we're going to go through what we call the whirly wig. And I know there's all kinds of cool things we can call that. Um, and then we're going to do some skid landings. Everybody good with that? Yes, sir. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's taxi over to the uh, to the course and go through it once. This is uh, Super 3 Charlie spooning up. Over three whiskey, staging area one, spinning up. Super three Sierra, staging area one, spinning up. Super three staging area one. So what I just did is I actually uh, posted up to uh, zero two zero. Uh, two or three whiskey uh, taxing the staging area too. Be Alpha one, Alpha six, Alpha two. Super three Sierra information. Super 3 Echo, how you doing? Super 3 Charlie, uh, spooling up. Patient. Super information. Super 3 Whiskey, uh, entering, uh, Alpha 6, runway 220, right? Sierra entering Alpha 6. Super 3 Whiskey uh, exiting uh, runway 220 right, Alpha 6. Super 3 Charlie entering uh, Alpha 6 of the Alpha 1. Alright, Super 3 is going to be flying high watching you guys go through the course. Sierra entering Alpha 2, clear Alpha 6. Jumping three Charlie, getting ready to uh, exit Alpha 6 into Alpha 2. Uh, so the machine entering Alpha 6. 3 Sierra in advance course.
Number three, Charlie, exiting uh, stitching area two, will be moving into advanced course. Eddie, you got yours on? Gotta watch your uh, back end uh, crabbing across that building. Good job, Kobe. Oh, watch yourself there, buddy. You're good. Nice job. Thank you. Super appreciate entering a bad course. When you're crabbing across the uh, staging area, too, nice, slow, easy. Watch where you're going, controlled crab. Doing this uh, fast is not going to be successful. Doing it under full control, that's the stuff. All right, so we got to do my favorite thing in the world. It's called a whirly wig, right? So a whirly wig is where you cruise down the runway, keep it under 35 mile, kilometers an hour, rudder it one way or the other, to spin the chopper around. Now, the biggest thing you got to understand is see the top of the rotor blade? When that is a high RPM, that creates a full wing. So it's like flying with a full wing on top. Does that make sense? It's like a disc you're flying with, right? And it's pushing air down, it's creating lift, and the way that you, you push your uh, stick, that's going to give you thrust. So a little bit of thrust, keep the chopper level, and you can actually spin kick that thing around, right? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you to trust yourself to spin the chopper around, to have um, full control of the chopper when you're doing that, and understand a little bit of the aerodynamics. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in a chopper. Um, you guys jump in with me, and I'm going to do one of these. Um, with you guys and then I'm gonna come back drop you guys off and you do your own does that make sense all right I'm back here we go all right so what I'm doing cruising down the runway I'm gonna try and keep it about uh, 20 kilometers off the deck keep it very controlled and notice how it's just nice and slow I'm going right now I'm gonna even up the chopper I'm gonna just spin cruise around get it under control and keep it going and if you notice if you go the other way right going to be a little bit slower because it's going to be called anti-torque. So we're going to go cruise around, try to keep it the way it is, and try to keep the momentum speed. So what's happening is that the chopper has forward momentum. If I shift that momentum to the right or left, I'm going to start going there, which I don't want to do. I just want to keep my speed down a little bit, get it to just about 35 kilometers an hour, about, I don't know, I'm just trying to stay about 10 meters off the deck to be honest with you. And I'm going to just spin it around nice, slow, easy, controlled, keep it normal, keep it level, and keep on going. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. I'm moving yeah. back. I'm going to go get you guys in the chopper so it's not wasting any more time. And I'm going to haul ass. Stand by. A little bit of altitude when doing these is preferable to being too low because you don't want to catch a skid and go into a dynamic rollover. Charlie entering Alpha 6, beginning where the board. I 
kick it all the way through, man. There you go. Keep the chopper straight. Nice job. Nice job. Let the uh, let gravity and physics do the work. Three Sierra entering Alpha Six. Good recovery, good recovery. Nice job, here's number two right here, that might be Mac. Need him, Charlie. That will be the, the uh, first one. That's right. Alpha 5 and clear that runway. Super 3, Charlie. Super reaching and entering Alpha. Nice job, keep that, uh, keep that rotors uh, straight. Nice and flat. The Sierra right underneath me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I notice one way it goes easier than the other. Right goes faster. <laughs> You're not uh, fighting the torque at that point. Not at all. <laughs> Torque is what keeps you stable. Speed keeps you directional. Three Sierra clearing Alpha Six entering zero four zero. Nice job, Shin. Keep that control. There you go. Uh, where are you at, Sierra? At the end of 04. Uh, go ahead and cross over and uh, go down 045, 040 right. Do it all the way back. I'm on 040 right. Charlie exiting Alpha 4 into uh, Alpha 6. After that, sorry, Soki, I got, I got you confused, buddy. That's all. You're good. Gotta keep your speed up, Kobe. I'm just exiting uh, Alpha uh, 4 to Alpha 6. Part of that. Who's down at the end of the runway? All right, move over to the other runway and turn around. There you go. Keep it going. Once you get back uh, to Alpha 2, go ahead and exit to uh, staging area 2. Okay. Charlie uh, entering uh, 040 uh, right. Sorry, we're working here to do so. Roger that. All right, entering uh, runway two two zero right, and the whole idea is to get a speed up to about. I started out at sixty. Um, cruise about sixty. And what you want to do is you want to come down nice and slow, use your rudder to land to land it. And all you're doing is skidding to a stop, and that's it. So all you do is stay really low off the ground, get up to about 60 to 70 if, if you really want to get crazy, and just pull back a little bit, nice flat land, and you can cruise. So let me see here. I can get up to, fast as I've gone is 170, and it does pretty well. I wouldn't suggest that because it's really easy to blow things up on your chopper. Um, so all I'm doing is whenever I'm skidding, I'm actually controlling it with my rudder, right? Okay, so what we do is we'll cruise down, I'll just do it once over here. We cruise down uh, this runway and get to the end. 
and uh, we'll circle back around and do it back and then we'll go back to chasing area two and land do a little bit of debrief and i'll kind of show you if you guys want to stick around a little bit i can show you what we're going to be doing next that you might want to start practicing on and it'll actually be on the test too all right i'm doing 180 you guys want to try and land this thing go for it Ow. Oh, oh, boy. Okay. I got engine coming out. Yeah. So that's what happens. I'll heal everybody once we get on the ground. I'll just take a second. Sorry about that, guys. I was going to see how, how far we can get. That's all that, good. That doesn't work. Science. <laughs> and my tail rotor's gone, so I got to land it like this. Stand by, stand by, stand by. Here we go. There we go. All right. Everybody out. Three Sierra entering Alpha Six. Controlling uh, inventory Alpha 6. Sierra, uh, clear it. Door gunner for six entering oh, hold. zero four. Exiting uh, T two zero right, uh, entering the zero four. Uh... Ready, Charlie. Entering zero four right. Uh... Do what? You guys are using those uh, tail rotors to keep you straight. All right, to kind of give you guys a little bit of a uh, insight for uh, the vert hill. Um, what we do is we come in nice and low. We uh, let our speed um, be the ones to slow us down while we uh, lower our collective, um, and we kind of bleed the speed out and um, use the force of the rotor blades to give us enough lift and uh, slow us down so we can land on a vert. What we do is we land on the, the skids in the front of the aircraft. So we're kind of teeter-tottering on the front, holding the nose down, not too far because you'll blow up. Um, and we're gonna let Eddie out. And then we're gonna come back. We're gonna actually um, move away from the the uh, actual hill backwards and we're going to let gravity and aerodynamics kind of pull us away from the mountain and spin us around. Never turn your tail into the hill. Here we go. Uh, 
this is kind of a, a good uh, approach. I just cruise right up this little, uh, I don't know, nice little finger. And I'm just kind of going off my speed a little bit. I see it coming up. It's uh, one of those things where it takes a little practice to get there. You overshoot it like I'm almost overshooting it, but I'm still going to drive this thing right into that, uh, right in that marker, moving up. And I'm sitting there, I go, 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 go. He's out. That was a little bit shady going back. I'm just full power of the chopper, let it spin, catch the control, and move away. All right. Come back pick you. Eh, make him walk. You got a long range or short range there. Oh. You copy both? I got you on my way back up to the And you just want to make it nice, easy, and gentle. Come on. Coming up. And we go back home. The nice thing about uh, invert uh, drop off and pick up, enemies on the other side, and you never uh, let them hit your chopper or your guys that you're inserting. The mountain will hide the uh, the sound, and you can do some pretty cool little uh, spec op insertions and uh, extractions. All right, back to RTB.